I had a reputation for being pretty darn good on the wheel. And I'd be back in the chart house working on something. They'd hire for me and put me back on the wheel at times. And this particular day, uh, uh, the Jap planes had got in on us. It uh, got broke through and was coming out towards us. And I was steering the ship. The captain was out on the wing of the bridge at the starboard side. Bridge isn't big. Now, we had about 50 planes on the hangar deck, or flight deck, but the engines run and roar. Then the main batteries start firing. And that's the four or five inch shells right in guns in front. And that's the loudest gun noise you've ever heard in your life. And we had a quad of 40 millimeters in front firing. We had a quad on top firing, and a battery of 20 millimeters firing on the starboard side. You can't hear one word or a command from the captain. Can't hear nothing. And it fills full of smoke, blue, orange type smoke. Now, the captain, I was watching him, he wanted me to turn right. I could tell that, but no command, I can't hear it. He ran in the pilot house. We had not rehearsed this. We hadn't rehearsed it, hadn't practiced, didn't know that. He ran in, he looked at me, and he started beating me on the arm. Well, you want to go that way? We'll go that way. That went on for several hours. He'd run back in the bridge and beat me on this arm. We'd go that way. Or he'd pat me on the back and he'd point straight at it. And that's what we did, dodging planes and bombs and stuff for all that time. But we never rehearsed that one. He beat the hell out of me. <laughs> but you understand, an aircraft carrier like this ship is a heavyweight boxer with a glass jaw. It'll beat the hell out of you. But if you hit it, you hurt it bad. Everything on this ship blows up, burns, or does both. We're just kids. We're just kids. But some of our airplanes would fail and the pilot would go down and the Japanese would uh, capture them. Now you know what they did? They cut their heads off. What do you think that did to us? Made us tigers. During the war, we destroyed 119 Japanese warships and about 15 of them were big battleships and cruisers and carriers. With our 90 pilots, we destroyed over 2,000 planes in the air and on the ground. And with our own guns, we shot down 15 planes around us. But that's the bad news. You want to hear the good news? We didn't take one damn prisoner. That's what they did to us. Overnight, they just turned us into tigers. Every one of us. Every one of us. We haven't changed. Patriots Point is a, a state agency, actually, that was born right before the bicentennial. And the General Assembly gave us a mission of public education, public recreation. Naval and Maritime Museum began in 1975 when the USS Yorktown was brought here to, to great fanfare and tied up at this pier. And over the next few years, more ships joined uh, this particular Yorktown was commissioned in 1943. The uh, original Yorktown in World War II actually sank at the Battle of Midway, the most important battle of the Pacific Theater and the, the location where the, the turning point of World War II in the Pacific. In honor of that Yorktown, CV-5 was her whole number, a ship that was under construction in Newport News at that time to be named the Bonham Richard, named for John Paul Jones's ship, was renamed while under construction USS Yorktown CV-10. She entered the war in 1943 and was involved in pushing the Japanese back to the Japanese mainland after that turning point at the Battle of Midway in 1942. Don Ziegler is, uh, is an employee here. He is a, a tour guide. He is our only staff tour guide. Um, Don was a, what we call in the Navy, a plank owner. Don was, was on board the Yorktown when the Yorktown was commissioned. He was in the pre-commissioning crew when the ship was being built. 
and he entered the Navy as a 17-year-old, um, was a quartermaster. So he, uh, quartermasters do things like uh, navigate. They are the, the master helmsman. He was up on the bridge during general quarters. He watched the attacks take place. He was the captain's phone talker during general quarters, during the major battles. He saw it all firsthand. Well, they got a program on, and they asked me to help, you know, uh, the limited time I have with them on teaching them, it's not teaching, you're exposing them to the opportunity for them to feel what the wheel was like to a helmsman. But uh, to teach them, there's more to it than that. But the children want, want to feel the ship so much. You see it even, <laughs> if you watch closely, their teachers want to too. They want to get a hold of that wheel. Everybody does. And it's unique and we want to help them get a hold of the wheel. I think anybody who is a student of history understands that the, the term greatest generation is not a misnomer. It was, an, it was an unbelievable feat that we accomplished fighting on both sides of the United States and to, to help our allies win that war. And as we all know, we're, we are in the process of losing that generation. And if there's, if there's any, anything that's happened in our nation's history that we need to remind ourselves about so that, so that we maybe don't make the same mistakes again, it's what happened in World War II. So it's, it's a big issue with us. It's, we have decided, for instance, with the Yorktown. The Yorktown existed as a commissioned vessel until 1970. What did we choose to feature throughout the Yorktown? Her World War II history, because that to us is the most important story to tell, the most compelling story to tell to remind future generations of, of what has to be done to preserve freedom.